So hey everybody, Cammie here. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you three tasks that I do when it, the time arises in the kitchen and for one laundry thing that I do. So I hope you enjoy the video, and if you would, give me a like, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and thanks for stopping by the house. I'll see you on the other end. I have some um, leftover at the bottom, and it's Epsom salt, but this time when I make my uh, laundry booster, I'm not using Epsom salt because since I made this last, um, this last uh, batch of my laundry booster, I found out that Epsom salt can actually make your, um, your hard water even harder. So, let's see, make sure you can see this. So I'm using, you can use any brand, but this is just what I got at Costco. Um, I think at Costco or Walmart one. Um, I'm just using kosher salt. And kosher salt, when you use it in your laundry, uh, for your laundry booster, it is actually going to, uh, to make your clothes softer. Now, like I said, I have a little bit left in the bottom and I'm not gonna worry about that. There's not enough of it to really you know, to really bother my laundry. I didn't have a problem with it, but um, I just really don't wanna take a chance. I mean, you can get kosher salt for so cheap that i just rather go ahead and just switch over to this. But you can do what you wanna do. I would, though, if I was using um, if I was using the Epsom salt recipe, I wouldn't make sure that I use baking soda with it. I've done that before too, and I can't remember the exact um, ratio. I think it's one part of the uh, Epsom salt to a fourth of a part of the baking soda but I've got a two cup measuring cup right here. And I'm gonna measure that first. That's two cups. And I may not have enough of this. I may have to get some more um, kosher salt, even though I've just opened this, because I do wanna make sure that I have enough for cooking also. But this will be two more. Make sure y'all can see. Yeah, I might have to get more. Really, you could use about two boxes of this. It still comes out, um, I think, cheaper than buying the uh, commercial um laundry booster and i know that it's definitely better for you because you're using i mean you're using this and essential oils and that's basically going to be our two recipe our two uh ingredients now you can use whatever um essential oils that you like what you're going to do is for each cup you're going to use between 20 to 30 drops. So I have uh, three different essential oils that I want to use. The first one is orange essential oil. I want to use that. I'm going to go ahead and give that um, 20. And I don't really measure it that big of a deal because I, like, I just like for it to smell good. But the actual correct ratio would be about 20 um, drops per cup. And then, I also like lavender. And you could just use straight uh, one essential oil if you wanted to. I like to uh, kind of mix it up and come out with different 
different smells, different scents. And I'm going to give this a little bit more. The orange essential oil that I have, it can be a little bit overpowering. And so I just want to make sure that I can smell the beautiful lavender as a under note to that. And then the last thing, I have not actually used this before, but I had gotten it um, with all the Corona stuff going on, you know, and it's a germ buster essential oil. And there's that. And I'm going to, this time I'm going, and I'm not even sure how this smells. I've never opened it before. It's got a, it's got a smell to it. I'm going to be kind of um, easy with this. I don't want it to be my my um, scent that I really smell. And then all you got to do is just take a whisk. You can use a fork, a spoon, or whatever you want. But I find that using a whisk works really good. And what you want to do is you want to get all of those um, essential oils really, really well incorporated into your um, salt mixture. And you know what? That's basically it. And this will work for your laundry just as well or even better than um, the boosters that you get in the store. And you know what you're putting into it. Now, what I use to um, put mine in is I will use about, I have one of these old scoops from when I had bought some of the, um, you know, the store-bought stuff. And I will just either up to about that first line or a little bit less, you know, just about that much. You don't really need a whole lot. It's just a boost. About like that usually is what I'll use. You know. And I'm gonna have to get some more. You could even use this to mix it up if you wanted to. Um, and usually when I um, when I before I get my scoop to put in the to put some in the laundry, I'll kind of just give all of that a uh, a good good mix now I have this little container that I had gotten um, you know it's just shoe box size I had gotten it for something else and this is what I put mine in if you're just trying it out and you don't want to uh, make a whole lot you could just use a mason jar and you know use that to see how you like it because it might not be for everybody but then again, you might try it and you might decide that this is, this is what you want to do. Anyway, that's my first little thing that I needed to get done here in the kitchen. I like to save the ends of my celery stalks and regrow them. And this is really easy to do. If you'll save like your jars, like this is a better than bouillon jar. And, um... This was a pimento jar. Then you can reuse these instead of using your um, your mason jars. Now, I just recently started a new experiment because I was watching Whooper Will Hollow. I love that channel and I'll link it below if you haven't been over there. Just let them know that I sent you. So I'm starting some sweet potatoes, slips, just to see if I can grow them. So I'm doing that. I've got three of those over here. That one is doing the best so far. The others are beginning to, to come along. But when you work, when you do have uh, vegetables like this that you're regrowing from um, things from the store, you always start them in water. So let me show you what I do and you'll have to Forgive my sink, it's making a crazy noise. Like here's the first one that I have in the pimento. I'm just gonna 
dump the old water. I kind of wash off the celery root. I give it new water and stick it in. And then I'll put it back in my windowsill. Same thing for this big guy here. See, because I, this has just been a few days and the water is already looking nasty. The water will get nasty on you quick. So, sometimes I'll wait three days if I forget. But I really don't want to wait more than three days to change their water. Because, you know, I don't want, after all I've been dealing with this, I don't want it to, and sometimes I'll, like, change the water twice if it's, like, really, I really don't like the way it's doing. I think my, I think my sink is making that noise because my sprayer is messed up. But anyway, and what I do with those is, you can, once they start getting their roots, which as you see, this one is getting roots. I'm, see, you can see that. Let me get it, see if I can get it to where you can see it. Okay. See that? Then, you can plant it in the ground. I like to use the top, the celery tops. And you can use that in salads, any kind of cooking, anything that you would use celery in, you can use the celery leaves and it's, it's just as good. Now, here's my sweet potatoes. What the instructions say from Whooper Will Hollow is to, and she used mason jars because that's what she had and that's what I have, the only thing I have right now that will fit these because my old spaghetti jars have tomatoes, tomato uh, suckers in them is, and I think that might need more, is you want to put the toothpicks in there for, to stick them in so that it'll, um, that where you can see it, I'm having trouble with my camera. You want to, where you can, um, make it sit and the bottom half you just want to uh, put in the water and you'll start seeing that you start getting these little places can you see that yeah you'll start getting these little places and that's where your sweet potato slips grow so I'm going to do my other two and then I'm going to put those back in my uh, sunny window and then I'll be on to the next little task I have to do in the kitchen. Last night for supper, I made a delicious white gravy to go on top of our mashed potatoes in my cast iron skillet, but I didn't get around to cleaning it right after. So, I'm going to clean it now. Now, this is controversial. Some people do not think you can put soap on cast iron. And that's fine. I do because I want to make sure it's clean. I never had a problem with it. This is a large um, cast iron skillet that I have. And I'm going to show you how I do it and your rules for your kitchen, you know, if you don't like this way, then you don't have to do it. I'm not going to force you, but at the same time, this works for me. I have to do what works for me, so I'm going to show you what I do. Always, I make sure that my water is hot. You don't want to use cold water with a cast iron, um, with a cast iron, you know, piece of uh, cookware. I'm going to get that. Now, I'm going to get my um, down. This was the, I usually use the blue dome. I'm not going some of that out. I usually use the blue dome, but with everything going on, when it was time to get new um, dishwashing detergent, I couldn't because they didn't have it. So I, I got the green, which is all right. Now, I take my lodge. Hope y'all can see this. I take my lodge of 
fresh. Put this in here so y'all can see it. I'm trying to, and I'm going to just scrub it so that all of this gravy mix, and it's got this in too that you can use um, to help aid to get the food off too. You know, I just, I don't know, for me, I just, I just want to make sure that it's clean when I, <laughs> when I go to use it the next time. And like I said, you know, some people don't believe in using, um, so, on their cast iron, and that's perfectly fine. Now, sometimes I have to, you know, you get the sprayer out and get all that off. And the keep, keep at it. The thing is with the skillets and all, you have these like the little corner areas that you have to get. And then I'll get like my, and these are so, this is one of my um, um, crochet um, dish cloths. I can't speak today, y'all. Dish cloths. And I'll get those, I'll get all in the little grooves and corners and all to make sure that I get all that. Cleanse it all. See where I'm at. You have to, sometimes you have to turn it around. And I'll scrub. To me, cast iron is like the, uh, the Rolls Royce of, uh, of cooking. Of cooking, um, cookware. Still can't talk, y'all. Okay? So, as you can see, I've got that all clean. I'm going to turn it around. And I just give the back a good cleaning fix. Okay, so I've got that. Then, what I do is I'm going to put a little bit of water in it. You don't have to put it up to the, uh, hope y'all can see that. You don't have to put it up to the uh, very top. Just, you know, just enough to where it coats the bottom. And then, I'm going to turn my eye on high. Okay, a little piece of cotton in there again. So like I said, just a little bit. Put it on my eye. Let me bring you over here. And then I'm just going to let that, um, just let the water just cook until it dissolves. Now, my stove is just a little bit, it just leans a little bit, which is something we've got to take care of. So, I will, ever so often, just kind of do this to it, just to kind of make sure that that gets evenly coated. And all I'm going to do is just let this, basically let this just um, cook. Just let the water go until it uh, dissipates. And then once that happens, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what I do next. Okay. As you can see, it's dry. Now, I'm going to let it cool down a few minutes because cast iron hot is one of the worst burns. <laughs> that a uh, cook can get. It's terrible. I've had it, believe me, trust me, you don't want to learn. Just learn by my mistakes. Anyway, when this cools down a little bit, then I'll show you how I season it for the next time. 
Once it's had time to cool down a little, it's still going to be hot. It takes cast iron a little bit of time to cool down. But I use grapeseed oil to season. It's just what I like. Now, let me see if I can get this to where y'all can see it. One thing that a lot of people do when they season is they actually use too much seasoning. And that can cause buildup. I just take a little bit of the oil up to my cloth. And another, another thing that you want to do is when you're seasoning this, you want to make sure that you um, season something like, like this. And you're, you're going to season like a black. That happens, that's okay. And you can give it a good once over. Make sure you get the handle. And then what I do after that, is turn it over. Just a little bit more, one little bit, and I get the back side. And that's it. That's all I do. I think one thing that intimidates people about using cast iron in their cooking is because they think that the upkeep is going to be so hard. Well, it's only hard if you make it hard, you know? And um, I use this cast iron skillet a lot and if you just do that I mean I haven't had any problems there's some people who you know they would never never um, clean and season their cast iron this way and that's fine this is how I do it so there you go three things that I do as part of my homemaking so look for more videos like that uh, I hope that you found at least one that was helpful, maybe gave you some ideas, some ways to save some money. But anyway, y'all have a great day, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Y'all be blessed.